the most important responsibility that I have to this company is hiring A players. So we know we're a physical therapy company, uh, but where can we go? Let's get all great people on board on this bus, put them in the right seats, and then we're gonna get to someplace great, as opposed to we're gonna go here and we're gonna do that before the right people. So my first taste of physical therapy, being an athlete growing up, I played uh, basketball uh, anywhere from grammar school all the way through the college level. Um, so I consider myself a, a somewhat of a higher level athlete than others, you know, being in the, at the college ranks. When you're at the college ranks, you spend the majority of your time in the athletic training room or going to physical therapy uh, outside of your day-to-day -day practice and schooling. Uh, my first experience with physical therapy was back in Connecticut. Um, I met a, um, who is now my mentor, uh, he runs a large practice in, in Connecticut in the suburbs. And I really was drawn to it because of the relationship building aspect of things. Yeah, I was always interested in the sciences and I always wanted to do something involved with medicine. Um, but I really like the fact that you could sit in front of someone and really establish a relationship and also disseminate some very pivotal information that would help better that person's life because I know what it did for me. It carried me through athletics and kept me healthy, and it did a lot for me, and at the same time, I was able to make some great relationships um, to the point now where this uh, individual is my mentor. So the first introduction to physical therapy was at that same pool um, that I worked at when I was younger. I then coached the swim team and was a, a lifeguard there for upwards of eight years um, so we would always get uh, a piece of paper for private swim lessons um, there was one that was on the board for the longest time so I picked it up and I was like you know this is something I can easily contact the mom and see what's going on so I called the mom and she was like hey you know are you sure you want to give my son swim lessons and I was like yeah well, why wouldn't I and she's like well he has autism so I said that's not a big deal I have no problem you know working with your son, Nathan, that's his name, I'll never forget it. Um, so I started working with him and it was just something that came naturally to me of working with someone with autism to teach him how to swim. So one day his mom pulled me to the side and asked me what my career goals were. And at that time I was a freshman in college or freshman or sophomore and I had no goals. I was like, you know, I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna try to figure it out as I go along. So she brought up physical therapy and she asked me if I ever thought of it. Um, I had not and she told me that I've gotten a lot further with her son than some of his physical therapists have from an aquatic therapy standpoint. Um, that got the ball rolling. I started thinking about PT, I started shadowing and I found out that this is something where my passion, where I, I have a true passion for. My first introduction into the field of physical therapy, I was in high school. Um, I played football, and of course football players get hurt with everything. And my mom actually worked in a physical therapy office. She was an office manager, still is to this day, an office manager for a small practice back in Maryland. She brought me in to, to see this therapist. And I had a pain in my foot, I remember, and the first thing he did was he looked at my back. And I'm like, that's really weird. Um, but then he, he looked at, he only worked on my back, he barely even touched my foot. and in that process actually wound up healing me. And I was like, whoa, that was, don't know what that was, that was really, really cool. Through that I got an internship working at a physical therapy clinic here in the city and instantly fell in love with it. Um, it was the hands-on nature, it was developing the relationship with the patients, it was actually being there for them, relating to them, and the relationships that we built together um, while treating that really stuck out and I knew that that's what I want to do. That's where I want to be and, and how, I want to, how I want to be a doctor and how I want to heal people. My uncle's a doctor and uh, his practice owns a physical therapy practice. Um, so when I was deciding that I, I really liked biology growing up, um, I was into sports, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I had the opportunity to um, volunteer in his practice a little bit and check out the medical side, check out the therapy side. Um, and the one thing that I found really um, you know, different between the two was you know, the doctors are in and out of the room really quickly and they're, and they're recommending that patients go to physical therapy. Um, and then when they're at therapy, you know, the therapists are spending an hour with the patients and actually helping them with their problems in that moment. Um, and it, it was just a really cool like dynamic. You see a lot of really dynamic exercises happening. And as someone who was an athlete growing up, um, it was just really intriguing that that was people's jobs um, on a daily basis. I was working at the gym um, at University of Maryland where I went, was, went to school. 
and a lot of my colleagues were pre-physical therapy and were telling me about you know what the field was and at that point I didn't really understand what physical therapy was and then I got an internship for a summer and I absolutely loved it. I loved um, that the physical therapists were really getting to know patients and get, making connections with people and really helping them and that's something that I from day one from that internship that I knew that what I wanted to do. So my interaction with physical therapy has been a little different than most people just because my parents and my older brother are actually physical therapists so we're a family of physical therapists so I grew up around it my whole entire life. My project in the first grade was actually what do you want to be when you're older and mine was a physical therapist. I always knew I wanted to be in healthcare just from being around it my whole entire life but as I got older looked into being a physician or a dentist or a nurse and once I realized the relationships that my parents built and became friends with their patients it was kind of the point that I knew that I wanted to be a physical therapist for the impact you have on so many lives. My first interaction with physical therapy is that in high school, I was a dancer. I was doing musical theater all the time. I had dance classes on the side, and I had this terrible accident in my PE class where I was running on the bleachers, which I should not have been doing, and I fell down the bleachers and dislocated my arm. After that, I was so unstable, especially as a dancer who was so hypermobile, that my shoulder came out again and again and again. And I thought my life was over. I thought that everything that was important to me as a performer, as a dancer, I'd never be able to do again. But I went to physical therapy, I had a surgery, and after eight months of continued physical therapy and hard work, I was able to dance again, and that was huge for me. I didn't think that that was even possible. So that was my first right moment saying, oh my gosh, if I can do this, maybe I can help everyone else do this too. Knock on wood, I've never been a physical therapy patient. I think when you meet a lot of physical therapists, a lot of them have been patients in their past and that's kind of what drove them to the field. Um, but, you know, I always had a, an interest in medicine and, you know, I always wanted to go to medical school one day, but, you know, I think learning different you know professions and seeing what they have to offer not only from a provider standpoint but also what you're giving to the patients um, my first interaction with physical therapy was when i was a senior in high school um, i actually did an internship um, while i was in school in a clinic and i absolutely loved it i loved conversing to people um, i really felt like that was something that i could see myself doing because it wasn't necessarily you know, meeting a physician where you, you know, see your patient typically one to two times a year. This is something that's kind of ongoing, developing relationships, so I thought it was a cool thing. Spear was not my first job at a school. I worked at a great outpatient facility in Long Island at first, for the first six months, and then I wanted to transition to something um, a little bit different. So I had originally taken a job to help run, as a therapist, help run a multidisciplinary clinic. And that is when I heard about Spear through one of my best friends. His cousin happens to be Mike Virgil, who's one of the other, at the time, assistant director, but now is a clinical director here with us. And I had spoken to him a little bit, and just hearing about the culture, the opportunities for growth, how um, amazing and well-respected Spear was, being that we were the APTA Private Practice of the Year um, in 2016, it really, I knew that this was a place that I could develop my craft, grow and learn when I needed to grow. I think uh, originally when we first started at 55th Street and then moved to 56th Street, we were a one clinic practice. So there was one culture and when you came in, you felt it and you bought into it. And if you didn't buy into it, it was obviously not the right, not the right fit. And as you grow, it's harder and harder to maintain that. I think the culture by cultivation happened when we were in the second practice. We learned a lot about our interview process, the right questions to ask, having people come in multiple times, having people shadow other therapists to see if they really feel like they are part of the culture, if the people in that clinic feel like that person fits into the culture. Because you want it to be a fit from both sides, right? You want it to be a fit with the person that's gonna be coming in and you want the people that are already there to be comfortable with the person coming in. You really have to have buy-in from your directors initially. The people that are running the day-to-day -day operations of that clinic have to be fully bought into the culture of the company. You know, we have lots of times where we all come together and we go over uh, the cultural part, the values of Spear, 
And then the job of the director is to bring that back to their staff and really cultivate and maintain uh, the overall culture of Spear. And of course, there are gonna be uh, differences in culture for each clinic. Lots of, you know, all the clinics have a uh, different element to their culture, but there's, all, there's a common theme amongst all of the clinics when it comes together. I started working at Spear um, as a new graduate coming right out of grad school. So I had moved down here for uh, my last affiliation um, during PT school um, and loved New York City and I wanted to stay. I actually Googled Spear. That's how I, that's how I found out about Spear. I came in, got called in for an interview, um, came in, and just the energy of the clinic, I think from the very beginning, it was infectious. You, know, you could tell that the people working there had such great relationships with each other. Um, and I think that's what really sold me on Spear. So I would see a lot of like social media posts from Spear and how they'd have fun dress up days. And this was back when I was in school. And I thought to myself, like this could be a really fun place to work. So I decided my last clinical rotation that I wanted to be at Spear. So I did my rotation at Spear, and not only was it a really great place to learn, but also the culture was amazing. They welcomed me as if I was one of their own staff members. I went to picnic in the park as a student. I participated in all the dress-up days, and it was just a really warm, welcoming environment, and that's kind of when I knew I wanted to be at Spear. So I chose Spear because our values aligned very closely. You know, I really wanted to help people get back to what they do and what they love. Um, and I wanted to help with, you know, an active population, people that were interested in, in sports or activities, and you know, I saw that Spear worked with a lot of those people. Um, so that, you know, helped draw me into Spear, and then I think what made me love Spear was just the people that I work with, whether it's my coworkers or patients. So from my first day, I always felt, you know, very welcomed and accepted and kind of supported. Um, very first day on the job, we you know, had a kind of a busy patient day, went through some training, and then it was one of the technician's birthdays that day. So about five of us went out for drinks like around the corner, and it was just a really cool bonding experience when I was brand new and didn't really know people that well. So I could see how much everyone really cared about each other and like wanted to push themselves to get better and push each other, uh, and that's always been kind of my, my philosophy. So my first day at Spear, uh, you know, trying to be as prompt as possible, I show up about 30 minutes before the clinic opens. And of course, don't have my key on the first day, so I'm waiting for someone to come in. Uh, and the first person to show up to the clinic was one of the physicians that we shared the location with. Uh, I introduced myself, told him who I was, thinking that he was maybe a physical therapist as well. Uh, but he was in fact a, you know, a physician and one of the top referral sources for our company. Uh, and, you know, after I introduced myself, told him who I was, uh, he just you know, informed me that I would be, or that I was really lucky to be joining the team that we had there at 84th Street, uh, and really, really lucky to be, be joining a, a team you know, with Spear. Um, so from there, I knew that for someone that was outside of our organization to be giving me that information on my first day, I was really even more excited to begin uh, you know, building a caseload for myself and being a part of what Spear was. I do remember first day of the job uh, was here at 44th Street. Ryan was the clinical director at the time, and um, I remember being greeted really warmly. Very, I felt very welcome. And that's one thing about Spear that has been consistent. It's a really great atmosphere. It's a nice balance of um, patient to therapist. There's not too many patients at once, and I left another clinic because it was just giving me too many patients at one time, so it was a nice balance, but it was a really fun, dynamic atmosphere. So I do remember that first day. I remember my first week, actually, and I texted Dan, and it was Friday, and I was exhausted but happy. And I texted Dan and said, I was really happy that I'm here, so thank you. I think there are certain things that you realize quickly in an organization when you start off. And one of the things that I, was very apparent to me day one was that every employee had the tools and resources to do their job. Um, everybody was getting support. Everybody was getting feedback. There was clear expectations. There was always an opportunity for every employee to voice what's on their mind. Um, I also think the continuous improvement model, meaning how can we get better as something that really says a lot about an organization and I think it's values that Spear has had that has really led them to become leaders in the industry. 
how can we focus on giving our staff members everything they need to be successful? And we really feel that if we can give our staff members everything that talented employees want and create an environment where talented people want to come to work, meaning setting clear expectations, giving them resources, providing them with opportunity, if we can really focus on that, the outcome are gonna be happy, engaged employees that are gonna produce better results for our patients. And that's gonna drive the organization, and that's gonna drive growth in itself. So driving growth and growing and profit, that's all just a result of creating an environment where talented people wanna come to work. I chose Spear because of the culture, because of the growth and development opportunities, and the mentoring that they were offering me as a new grad. In one of my clinical rotations, we didn't have our orthopedic class yet, and I had to go into an orthopedic clinical rotation, just throwing me the wolves. And I'm like, what do I do? And I felt like coming here that that wasn't going to happen because of the mentoring opportunities that they had told me about during my interview. I just remember everyone being extremely supportive. Um, everyone took me aside and, and said, you know, if you have any questions, just come over, talk to me. Um, they were giving me tons of strategies to just be successful in my first day. Um, everyone welcomed me with open arms. I mean, it was, it was really great. I was a, a staff therapist at 44th Street, and we were looking to open our fifth location in 2015. And there was an opportunity at, um, to, for the build out at 57 West 57th Street. Um, I applied and uh, I was given the opportunity to start uh, that practice and my head was spinning on the first day and uh, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. I think it taught me a lot just about you know taking complete ownership over a situation and just persistence and grit is what's going to make get you through. When we started to reorganize our, our management structure you know I knew I wanted to continue along that path you know my passion was really in developing my team and and helping my team um, become better and reach their goals. So I threw my hat in for uh, the regional director and, and here I am for director of the Freedom Region. And um, you know, there's nothing better than seeing your team members succeed and, and that's what I love doing and that's why I love working um, with them and, and helping them achieve their goals. So my entire team was brand new. They were all new therapists. They were all um, just fresh out of school. Um, so watching them grow from that first month on the job. Um, I also had hand surgery within four months of opening Tribeca. Um, so having Kate really step up, take on so much more responsibility when I couldn't treat. And now she's been a therapist for two years and she's taking on leadership roles. Um, now we have a whole team of like two plus year therapists. We have an occupational therapy with a hand program that's grown. Um, I was also able to pass my hand exam and become a certified hand therapist all while still being a clinical director, um, which is one of my greatest accomplishments, still being able to be clinically really sound and excel there as well as in a leadership role. So besides me being a full-time physical therapist, I'm also a pediatrics program director. Essentially what happened was we realized that there was this huge population of kids that wasn't really being treated or marketed to in the sense of like, hey, listen, we can help you. So we took that response and we just went with it. And now here I am uh, with a team of pediatrics physical therapists treating from our populations from newborns up to the age of 18. So with this program, Sphere has allowed me to sort of help build up this program by removing all the barriers that are sort of standing in the way. They've sort of helped me market and help build relations with these doctors and so in the past two years we've probably seen about a 40% increase um, in our pediatric population which is saying a lot in the help that I've received. So from a physical therapist standpoint treating a pediatric population compared to adult population is definitely different in the sense of how we approach everything right. I think Treating our kids is a lot more fun in a way because you have to be a little bit more creative and trying to let them ha be able to have more fun and our adult population, you know, things a little bit more structured. All in all, we are still kind of doing the same thing, trying to help them kind of do the things that they want to do and help them live a good life. Whenever you start a new title and there's really no, ex you, you write your own expectations, it's, it's hard to live up to those and to, to establish success factors when you don't really know. 
But looking at where that program was when it, I came four years ago to where it is now, where we had, um, when I became the director, we had three um, clinical education coordinators, and now there's also a, a clinical education liaison at every clinic. So now there's like 25 new positions because of that. And that was to see the growth of where we had um, our monthly, we have monthly manual groups now, we have MD lectures, and one of the one of the things that I really pushed for, which we got last year, was we're one of the um, few private-owned PT practices that has the New York State um, accreditation, so now all our education that we do here is New York State accredited. I'm really passionate about pelvic floor therapy and helping out this very specific, specific and underserved population. And I saw that there was a huge opportunity for us to expand on our, our pelvic program. We're really one of the only clinics in New York City to offer pelvic floor therapy um, that's approved and accepted, uh, that we accept insurance. Um, so it's more accessible to patients. And um, at the time, we only had a couple of pelvic floor therapists. I saw this as an opportunity to expand our program and help more patients throughout the city. You know, I kind of approached our uh, executive team to see if I could take a position to uh, foster that growth of our program. And so it kind of developed over time. And since then, we've had uh, the addition of about three or four pelvic therapists, and we've expanded to several locations. So it's been a really great opportunity. My relationship with my colleagues is something that, you know, most people don't believe me when I say it, but we are a family. Um, I, you know, I've been here six years, I've worked with some people for six years, and we've grown together in our, um, again, as a professional and as a person, and like, I am, some of my best friends come from Spear, and, you know, it's really, it's so exciting to be able to say that I work with some of the best people I know in my life, um, not even just in my working world. And um, you know, we share everything together. We're, we share moments of, of joy and success, and it's it's really been amazing to watch us all grow together. Um, my relationship with my colleagues has been nothing but amazing and positive. And you know, we share a culture of teamwork and um, no job too small. You know, we really all work together and help each other out whenever we can, and that's really the environment you want to work in. So in the next few years, um, I still see myself at Spears 56th Street location. Um, you know, it's our original location and it's the location I've been able to be for my whole career as a staff PT, assistant director, and now clinical director. So I, th I think it's a unique situation I'm in and a great opportunity to continue to help, you know, our future leaders within the company grow that or with our team. Myself and Spear as a company, I think we have a servant style of leadership and an emphasis on customer service like I I mentioned earlier, I think those two together are, are kind of shaping the way companies will both be created and evolve to make sure that their, their employees are well taken care of and supported um, and become a priority and their patients get the service that is unparalleled, like any of our companies that you would think of, like a Nordstrom or a, you know, a high-end car dealership where they roll out the red carpet. I think, I think we are very forward thinking as a company and Dan and Dave who founded it some 20 years ago placed an emphasis on customer service and I think that's where we're going to continue to lead the way and the charge in our field. I have been treating an older gentleman for a few years now. Um, I treat him and his wife and this one day I asked him, what did you used to do? Because he's He's quite a bit older and he's been having some difficulty like walking and just getting around. And I asked him, you know, what did you what do you like to do when you were growing up? What sports did you play? And he told me he played soccer and volleyball. So we got him playing soccer and volleyball in the clinic. I mean, I've never seen him smile so big and his wife came up to me and she told me the same thing. She was like, I have not seen him this happy in so long. Like, thank you so much for doing that. And I remember just thinking like, that was so simple, that was so simple and we got him, we still got him like doing some balance and doing some movement, but it was him doing what he wanted to do and what he used to love doing and what he deep down inside still loves doing and I think that has always really stuck out in my mind as like we, me and the, the rest of the team who was playing soccer and volleyball with him really impacted him that day and, and I think uh, brought some joy into his life then. A lot of um, the physical therapists I worked with at the 56th Street office are now clinical directors of some of our other locations. So I think it's been cool to see the growth of many different people within our company who have started as staff PTs and worked their way up to assistant director, clinical director, or even regional directors. 
Um, and you know, I think we're lucky enough to say that we have some great friends within this company, and now we're able to help um, teach the culture to the newer people joining our team.